Hello, kia ora. I'm Philip Duncan. Thank you for joining us for our Tuesday update for September the 12th. And we've got a colder change on its way into New Zealand. In fact, two or three cold fronts this week. But bigger picture, things are starting to dry out. We've got a big westerly wind about to set in across the country. We'll talk about that in a moment, but let's get into this short-term cold change. Uh, the blue is snow, the green is rain. So you can see the snow in the hills and ranges this morning here in New Zealand. But look, you drop a little bit further south and it's snowing over the sea. So that shows you how cold it is just south of Stewart Island, even a light dusting of snow on the tops of uh, Stewart Island. So a colder change sweeping through. This map also shows you quite clearly how El Nino works because we get more westerlies with El Nino. And see how the rain builds up in the southwestern corner of New Zealand, but Canterbury is dry and the lower North Island, that's very much what we get with an El Nino weather pattern. So that's why there is a concern about what is developing. So big blocks of high pressure parked over eastern Australia, that's a classic sign of El Nino. And the big windy west to southwest winds over New Zealand, also a fairly classic sign of El Nino. Stormy weather down here, normal, that's normal for this time of the year. And that's another part of uh, the puzzle here is that the spring weather pattern we have in September is remarkably similar to a developing El Nino pattern. So the two are very similar. And so you'll notice a lot more westerly winds and warm weather like this one still in the mix but uh, because we are in spring obviously but we're going to see a plenty of these windy westerlies in the forecast and so when you take a look at the rain map this is for the next three days ahead most of it down here in the southwestern corner where you're getting up to 100 millimeters of rain over the next three days but the further north you go the lower the rainfall totals are so just a few spits if anything the eastern side of the north island it's a remarkable story this year from all the flooding from cyclone gabriel and other events to where we are now which is drier than it should be and farmers already noticing that the grass isn't growing because it's so dry in the east and unfortunately that's a bit of a precursor to el nino so we've got a bit of snow in the mix up to uh, 15 centimeters on the snow tops no low level snow though, despite that snow falling down in the uh, Southern Ocean, there is not much coming through for low levels of New Zealand, but a little dusting down here, and then a bit of snow on Mount Ruapehu and also Mount Taranaki as well. And over in Australia, most of the wet weather in the southwestern corner, Perth, Fremantle, Albany, those areas are getting caught up with the same Southern Ocean storms that New Zealand's getting caught up in. So that's the reason why you've got about 30 to 40 millimetres there, but a much drier forecast elsewhere in Australia. Now the last map I've got before we get into the forecast, the next seven days departure from normal showing you rainfall. And so compared to other times over the last 30 to 40 years, how much rain are we getting in the next week? Not much. Australia very dry, looking very much like El Nino when you see that red spread out over the Tasman and into the top of the North Island, and that's what we're seeing. Also the blue on the side here and the white, white is normal rainfall, blue is above normal again showing signs of both spring and El Nino weather patterns starting to form. This is a little bit unusual seeing it so much wetter than usual but that's because they've got a low pressure zone which you'll see in a moment on our maps. So here we are for Wednesday, big block of high pressure which stretches from basically the top of New Zealand all the way over to Western Australia. That storm in the Southern Ocean coming up here, it's a decent storm uh, and that's why you've got the big gale force Norwest is kicking in for Western Australia and the cooler airflow for New Zealand, plenty of westerlies. That snowy stuff we saw falling over the Southern Ocean carries on down here. We don't have a southerly coming in. We've got basically west to southwest winds. So that's the reason why it's not as brutally cold as it could have been for New Zealand this week. Now on Thursday, more low pressure down here with high pressure parked over Sydney makes a perfect squash zone. Windy westerlies howling through here on Thursday. That will lift up the temperatures if you live on the eastern side, places like Canterbury and up towards Hawke's Bay, warm and windy for you, and becoming hotter over here. Temperatures into the late 20s for places like Adelaide and some parts of inland Victoria. So by Friday, there is that low pressure zone in the tropics, the one that's bringing a wetter than usual week for them. Not normally the case with El Nino, because normally high pressure sort of pushes these away. But the sea surface conditions up to the north are still a bit warm, so low pressure, not too surprising there. New Zealand might be very warm on Friday, big cold southerly coming through for you, snow on the mountains and ranges once again. And by the weekend, well, you can see what I mean about the windy westerlies that are about to start dominating our weather maps. High pressure all the way from the International Dateline, 
right across the screen to the Indian Ocean. So that is a significant block of high pressure. But just south of it, that's the windy westerlies all the way down to Antarctica. Now that's normal for spring, but El Nino just twists it up even more. So windy weather kicking in, and look at this on Sunday, just a straight line of wind coming from the Indian Ocean, south of Australia, railway tracks right over the top of Tasmania and straight into New Zealand. So welcome to spring, welcome to El Nino. Some people want El Nino because it's been so wet, but I would say the majority of people don't really want El Nino to kick in too much. It can be very problematic in summer, and in autumn. So while at the moment things are a little bit wet, just think fast forward three months, four months from now, and if the rain's still not falling around these uh, eastern areas, and you've got more of these windy westerlies in summer, that's the reason why you're hearing so much talk about El Nino. So the next update from the Bureau of Meteorology in Australia about El Nino is later on today. We'll have more details about this in our video tomorrow Wednesday. We will see you then. Have a good rest of your day.